Have you ever looked at a mountain bike and thought to yourself, you know, all it needs is some drop bars to be a gravel bike. That's it, just some drop bars. Maybe after a little bit more thought, you would have realized that that's not exactly the case because with drop bars, you have to change the shifters, the brakes, potentially the brake calipers, and it's a lot more complicated than that pithy statement would suggest. Well, my friends, today we're gonna get weird with a product from Surly. This is the corner bar and it's a drop bar air quotes, uh, which will allow you to use your pre-existing mountain bike shifters and levers so you can make these conversions a little bit easier. So let's get weird. Welcome back Pathless Peddlers. And if you're new to the channel, if you're into the non-competitive side of cycling and doing weird things like this, if you have found your people, hit that subscribe button. Okay, so this is a new, new product from Surly. It's called the Corner Bar. It I have to say, it's kind of a strange but cool idea and fits perfectly in the cave of bad ideas. So you would have noticed I did drop bars in air quotes because it's kind of a drop bar. It has a very, very shallow drop, probably technically the shallowest I've ever seen. It does have a flat riding position like many drops have as well as a in the drops position here. A couple more stats about this bar is that it is made out of chromoly. So let's see what it weighs. And it weighs in at 1.6 pounds or 725 grams for you weight weenies out there. You'll notice here specifically the diameter is 25.4, but a 31.8 shim is included. So this is actually a nice size for those retro mountain bikes that you want to convert. Brake lever compatibility is 22.2 .2, and it comes in three widths in 46, 50, and 52. Again, this is the 46 width version. The degree of flare is 41.4 degrees. The bar drop is 94 millimeters and the uh, sweep back angle here is 62.5 degrees. So I don't think quite as extreme as a dirt drop, but approaching that, definitely a little bit more uh, flared and inward facing than, than something like the Richie Venture Max. These will retail for $100, and I know that's gonna sound expensive to some of you, but when you think about how much money it saves you in terms of getting new shifters and brake levers and all that stuff, it's a bargain. This might be the cheapest way to make a gravel bike out of mountain bikes. So many air quotes in this video. Right, so this is the bike. I'm gonna put it on my trusty uh, Salsa Timberjack, which I just struggled on some ESI grips a couple of weeks ago. Now I'm gonna struggle, struggle to take them off. Uh, this part's not gonna be pretty, so I'm gonna fast forward it. All right, so with the snap of the fingers, the ESI grips are off. Took a little bit of air compressor work. So let's see, what would be the best way to approach this? So what I think I'm actually gonna do is move uh, the controls over to here first, and then remove the bar and then put this on. Starting off with the left side, only one screw to undo. I suppose one would put the controls over the top, I think. Or would you put it down here? Um, let's see. This is unexplored territory, people. So let's see how it works. So that's looking pretty good on the bottom part, I think. Gotta hand it to Surly, always being creative, making really innovative, wacky products. Actually, I'm gonna move it to the bottom again. On, on second thought, after handling it, I think it makes more sense on the bottom. That way the top bar is just a little bit less cluttered. And uh, I think I can still get to the brakes. You have to go get into the drops to get to the brakes. Okay, it's okay. It looks okay. It's actually, it doesn't look okay. It looks, it's on the handlebar. We'll finesse it a little bit more once I get the actual bar on to um, the bike here. So that took a little bit longer than expected. I had to fiddle around with a shim to make it work. Finally got it on there. It's not the most beautiful assembly here, but uh, let's pop this guy off the tripod now, show you guys what it looks like. So here it is, the Surly corner bar mounted on the timber jack. What do you guys think? Is it a gravel bike yet? <laughs> Practically a gravel bike. Uh, I'll show you how I ended up mounting this. On the right side, my brake and shifters aren't connected. So I put the brakes on the top and the shifter uh, portion on the bottom. What this allows me to do is activate the shifters and the brakes from the hooks here. 
On the other side, it's a little bit different story. The dropper lever and the shifter are one piece. So you can actuate the brake pretty well. A little bit of a tight squeeze to get to the dropper lever. Probably wouldn't be a problem if you have a non-integrated dropper lever, which I do not. But this is what I've landed on. So I think I'm gonna put some tape on it or at least cover up the bare metal and take it for a super short spin in the smoke. All right, everybody, this is the final product, the corner bar fully mounted. And, uh, you know, I took it for a very short spin. We've got terrible air quality here in Missoula, so not doing a super long ride with it yet. But I have to say, it actually worked pretty dang well. You effectively have two positions. The primary position is gonna be here in the drops, and you've also got this top bar position here so you can pull on the climb. Access to the brake lever is from the drop position. Actually feels really, really good. Don't have to stretch the fingers out. Good engagement. It's, it's a viable position. In terms of shifting, I've got the Shimano XT Dior uh, shifters and I can reach them pretty easily from the drop. Again, that is the primary position where you'll be able to brake and shift. Uh, clearly not up here. You do lose the in the hoods position. So what I found for me is that I had to raise the handlebar a little bit higher. So kind of similar to how you would set up a dirt drop. On the left here, I've got a combined brake and a dropper lever. I do think things would fit a little bit better if you could split it apart like I have here on the right side. In terms of tape, uh, I'm trying out these ODI grips, which are slightly easier to put on than the ESI grips. They have an interesting slinky type rubbery feel. And I've got some Jaguar Pro uh, handlebar tape, which is actually pretty nice. Using half of a roll, I was, I was able to cover the flat part for the tops of the bar. I think this is a super interesting product, especially if you like to uh, hack around your bike, mess around with different configurations. This definitely saves you the money of buying uh, road shifters and a derailleur and all that stuff. So if you want to test a proof of concept to see whether or not a certain mountain bike would work well with drops, because it does change how you sit on the bike and how the bike handles to some degree, this is probably the cheapest way to do it because you can use your pre-existing mountain bike components. A couple downsides to this is, as you can see here, the cables are really clustered in the front. So unless you feel comfortable lengthening the hydraulic cables, it does, make, it does take away some of the potential bag space if you wanted to go bike packing. And otherwise, that's about it. Uh, I think it's a really cool product from Surly, definitely on brand for Surly. Is it gonna be my primary handlebar on this bike? Probably not, but it will be one that's fun to mess around on. Uh, again, see if a drop bar conversion feels right on a mountain bike. I think that's one of the advantages of having the clamping part be 25.4, because if you happen to have one of those mythical, magical uh, 80s or 90s mountain bikes, you can, you can try them out as a drop bar gravel bike without having to update a bunch of components. So that's it for this video. Let me know what you think. If you have any questions, leave those in the comments below. I'll put a link to the handlebar in the description. And as always, keep the supple side down.